Well, we have lots of news for you this afternoon on the COVID front. A CDC expert panel has now endorsed the Novavax, Novavax vaccine. That happened this afternoon. But that leads to questions such as how soon before it's available and who should get it. Also, the latest on the BA5 subvariant. COVID cases, they've tripled in Europe and hospitalizations are starting to go up too. So what does that mean for us here in Ohio? For those answers, we bring in senior health correspondent Monica Robbins. There's a lot going on here. There is a lot going on. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. So let's start with the Novavax. We've heard about this for a while. Mm -hmm. Is this an option for everyone or is this for specific people? No, this is not an option for everyone. So Novavax will only be available to those who have not yet received a COVID vaccine. There's not enough study data relating to the mix and match with the other vaccines. So this is a vaccine that's made the traditional way, like most of our other normal vaccines. And the hope is it will appeal to those who've been on the fence about getting vaccinated. And as soon as Dr. Walensky signs off, it will be available. Right. So many people are confused about the second booster dose and the fact that new vaccines that include Omicron will be available in the fall. Should people get it now or should they wait? You know, we're seeing cases go up. So here's what I'm being told by docs. Anybody who is eligible, get your second booster dose right now, especially those who have compromised immune systems, high blood pressure, diabetes, or other comorbidities. As of last week, the new subvariant BA5, which is far more contagious, is now half of Ohio's cases. Nationally, it's causing a rise in hospitalizations, and we've seen a bump here in Ohio, too. While BA5 is able to skirt the vaccine and boosters, those who've been double boosted are less likely to get severe illness. Illness. Those who've had the original shots in one booster, even if they had Omicron over the winter, are still getting a very bad cold, not necessarily hospitalizations. So for that reason alone, the second boost may prevent you from getting that wicked cold that you probably know a lot of people have had. And yes, even if you get your second booster now, you will be able to get the new one in the fall. Second boosters are, are available for the immunocompromised and those over 50. But as cases rise, and I bet this is going to happen in the next week or so, those second boosters are going to be made available for everybody. Okay, very good. Am I imagining this, or once upon a time, did you not sit there and say that we were going to have some sort of nasal spray vaccine. Is that still an option? Yeah, where is that? Where are they? Yeah, where? That's, yeah I'm that's, not imagining that. You did no, tell us that, yes. right? Okay. Yes, I did tell you that. <laughs> and uh, likely it's going to be a couple of years before we see these on the market. So Operation Warp Speed, it's over, so government funding isn't pouring into this research. Now, Harrington Discovery Institute at UH actually funded research into two intranasal COVID treatments. One is a vaccine, and the other is a once-a-day self-administered nasal spray that would offer 100% protection from catching COVID. Wow. However, neither is in human cl clinical trials yet, and they don't seem to be fast-tracked like those original COVID vaccines. So, yeah, this is back to the traditional way we got to wait. For the, normal. the slow plotting? Yeah. I don't like that method. I, don't I like, like the that. fast track much better. You know what? I don't like it either. And <laughs> and honestly, as the COVID variants, the subvariants keep coming out, we are not out of the pandemic yet, folks. You know, and we don't know what's going to happen with BA5. This is something you really need to pay attention to. Is there to. any indication yet that it's that the fear originally was they were so deadly? Mm -hmm. Is there any indication that any of these subvariants or variants are as deadly as anything we saw in the initial waves. We are seeing a slight uptick in COVID deaths, but the most important thing to your point, yes, there may be a little bump in hospitalizations, but we are not seeing a huge bump in ICU admissions and people needing ventilators. What that's telling us is that the vaccines still work. Right. So that's what's so important people need to get, that if you get that vaccine, you are still protected. Mm -hmm. Even though you might get a wicked cold, you are still protected yeah. from severe disease. And the messaging is early on, people thought, get the vaccine, you won't get the virus. No. The messaging <laughs> has changed completely. You will you will likely you get may. the virus. I mean, at some point or another. We're all going to get it. Yes, but uh. the, the idea is you're not going to be as sick 
and more people will survive it. That is that was the point from day one of right. these vaccines. They were never meant to prevent you from getting yeah. COVID. I do think it was rolled out with a bit of a messaging problem, though. We were told. Oh, I thought. Oh, I'm good. I'm protected. I won't get it. The entire vaccine. I never told you no, that. No, you Jay. did. Just, she you did not. No, she did I, not say that. I heard that elsewhere. But I'm sure. I'm sure you did. And that's been the problem since day one. Right. The messaging of this entire pandemic has just been yeah. not so. That's good. why we rely yeah, so heavily that's on you. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Sure. She's always, she's a reliable source of she information. Is. I she's say it all the time. Girl. We count on you. Thank you, Monica.